Philadelphia. That's a tremendous franchise. I wish them the very best. I cannot thank enough the people of the Washington Wizards, our medical staff, our support staff, the testers that were with us all season long, everybody that was involved as we moved through uh, the uncharted waters that we all talk about. That stuff was real for us. We had tremendous support. I cannot thank the fans enough. You know, their, their patience and the, the ability to get into the arena, thanks to the mayor uh, at the end of the season, made such a huge difference. There's so many people that really helped get us through this season, and I can't thank everyone enough. So with that, I'll take questions. Go ahead, Chase. Hello, Tommy. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get right to it. Will, will Scott Brooks be back next season? You know, we're not doing anything about that today. Um, we are obviously going to do a thorough evaluation top to bottom of our whole organization and ways we can get better. But any question about that stuff, that's not for today. That's not this time. I will say this, Scotty did a hell of a job keeping this team together through some of the most difficult, dark moments, uh, probably in franchise history, to be honest with you. Some of the moments we faced in early season and to finish up the way we did, 17-6 down the last 23 and being able to go 19-10 and 10 since uh, the trade deadline, I think speaks very highly of a cohesive unit that was able to overcome great odds. And Scotty did a great job with that. That being said, we want to get better, all of us. It starts with me. I've got to do my job better. We all have to get better at what we do, and that's what we're going to use this next few weeks to do. I don't think we're going to accomplish anything today other than celebrate with our players, do exit interviews, uh, thank everybody, and then start that whole process. So that'll be more of it at a, at a later date, Chase. And what did the, the series against the Sixers – tell you about your team, your roster, maybe how close you guys are? You know, it's a difficult season when it comes to injuries, for sure. When you look at the amount of games that were missed throughout the year, and then certainly as you go into the playoffs, you still you can't think about the guys that you don't have, right? But honestly, we, we need to be a much better team this time next year to compete at the level we want to compete at. But I will say this, if you asked me that question this time last year, you know, that was before we acquired Russell Westbrook, before we signed Davies Bertans back, before we brought Daniel Gafford in on trade, um, before we drafted Denny. So, so there was a lot of things that happened before at the end of last season that, that contributed to the, the way that we were able to elevate this season. And we've gotten better the last two years. Our record has improved. We got to the playoffs this year. That's not always going to be. Uh, you know, now I, I think that's going to be the expectation moving forward. That, that's where we want to be. But certainly we want to finish much higher than that. And I think if we could have stayed healthy this year, you know, with all the stuff that we went through, I think we finished two games below 500. We finished in the eighth spot. We made the play in. We got to the playoffs. That was a great experience. But now that's no longer acceptable. We have to be much better next season, and we will. Chris Miller. Tommy, good morning. Chris. Um, the word culture has kind of been used a lot this year, kind of describing your group, bringing Russell in. I I'm interested to know, can you explain to us and to the fans exactly what that means in terms of the culture with the Wizards? Well, everything kind of starts with Bradley Beal. You know, this franchise moving forward, we, we put this team together around Bradley, we built that cornerstone, and we were able to acquire Russell uh, you know, very late in the game. We didn't have a lot of chance to spend much time with Russell before training camp, but Russell came in and certainly he and Bradley together created an environment here that is second to none, I believe, in terms of there's no drama, there's genuine brotherhood, and everybody wants to get better. And we bring it every single day. Um, you know, this was such a unique year. To, to get to the playoffs was the first time we had two days off back to back since All-Star break. So that, that was something I think for your young players, Chris, how important practice is. We weren't able to have that this year. That's not an excuse, that's a fact. So I look at all the things, all the options that we have available to us moving forward to get better. And it's gonna start with time. The time we can invest this summer, when things become more familiar, we're able to have the mini camps that we have. We're able to get back after Labor Day and have open gyms all September spending time together you know this season 
to get to where we are is a remarkable achievement. What the NBA, what Adam Silver, everybody was able to do to keep us safe to create this season, unbelievable. But where we can get better next year is spending time that we didn't have this year. Team dinners, op, you know, opportunities to spend time away from the floor. None of that was available to us. Those aren't excuses. But just looking back over it, I think that's something that the, the best bonds, the environment we want to create is the time that you spend away from the basketball floor. But what Russell brought to this team was he was an unbelievable co-pilot with Bradley, creating an environment that there was accountability amongst the players. I always say that the best teams, it's the peer pressure that keeps them going. That makes you going to, that elevates your performance. And Russell certainly brought, uh, I would call him a force of nature, in the way that he was able to come in and provide that for us uh, and, and support Bradley and, and the rest of these players moving forward. I look forward to that leadership. In terms of the development part of it, um, what are your expectations for Denny and some of your other players to participate in the summer league? Well, with Denny, you know, he's in week six of an injury that we think he'll be cleared after 12 weeks. So the most important thing to me is, is his therapy today. Um, Denny was with us on this last road trip. I watched his therapy, watched him out on the floor, very pleased with his progress. Our hope is to have him ready for 100% healthy uh, by the time uh, summer league rolls around, but it's not imperative that he play in summer league. We'll, we'll make that evaluation at the right time. But, you know, when I look at this season and I look at, you know, the progress that Rui was able to make, um, unfortunately, we lost Thomas Bryant early in the season. Then he missed the last 18 games. We acquired Gafford late in the, in the season. Uh, well, after at the deadline. So I think Daniel ended up, I think he only played 23 games with us this year. So there's a whole bunch of young players that I feel are going to really form a, a core of, of a move forward with Russell, with Bradley, that uh, makes such excitement for me moving forward. We look forward to that. But their development, to your point, is extremely crucial this summer. And we are going to put all the resources possible into that, making sure that they develop their game and continue to develop. Thanks, Tony. Anytime. Fred. Hi, Tommy. How you doing? Doing great, Fred. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I know you have answered variations of this question many times in many different contexts, but with Brad entering the final year, of, yeah. I well, with Brad asking the final year of his deal, um, you know, the context obviously changes. And so I'm just wondering how him entering a contract year affects not just his future, um, but also your guys' approach to the 21-22 season. Nothing's changed for me and for Bradley. We have straight line conversations. I guess I have to ask you to play back every answer I've given you before and play back every answer Bradley's given. We're going to take our time. We're going to discuss what's best for the Wizards' future. Everything, like I've said, we, we built this team around Bradley, and that's our intention moving forward. And Again, straight line conversation with him has always been very transparent, very direct, and that's how we'll continue. And I look forward to having those conversations with him, how we can get better, how we can grow this thing moving forward. I know he was very pleased with this season in terms of what we were able to accomplish in terms of creating that environment, and making us feel like this is a place that can be a perennial contender. And it starts with baby steps, certainly. But Bradley's been here nine years. He's given an awful lot of his career to this team. And this was, it was very gratifying last night to hear his comments about this year's team. And I think he's positive about moving forward in the future. And, and from an encore perspective, what, what do you feel like uh, are your actual objectives? What do you, do you feel like the, the team actually needs to add from an actual basketball perspective? You gotta add some more depth, certainly. You know, injuries happen, and they happen to everybody. We saw that happen to the Sixers with, with Envy going down, and there's got to be the next person up. We, we have that mentality, but we kind of ran out of players by the end of the season. You know, certainly losing Davis uh, in a series where we really drastically needed three-point shooting, that, that was difficult to go into that game without him last night. But we need more athleticism, certainly on the wing. we got to continue to add talent everywhere we can, and I think we've shown that, Fred. You know, I'm not afraid to take big swings. We're not afraid to go out and acquire players to trade, to do whatever it takes. And we signed some players last offseason that were probably a little unheralded, and, and I'm glad for that. I, I don't want them to have our, you know, our moves 
need to be about production, not about the, the press conference. But I was very proud of Robin Lopez. I was very proud of Awomero. You know, those signings didn't get a whole lot of notoriety, nor should they. But you know, those two came through big time for us this year. And we have some other players that I think are going to continue to step up moving forward. And I'm, I have no concern whatsoever that we'll always be able to acquire, attract talent. I want to retain the talent that we do have. You know, free agency is difficult. It gives everybody an opportunity. Everybody has options. Everybody has choices. It's very important to me that we protect the continuity of this team moving forward. When you find something that works, you want to build on it. You never say, hey, let's just run this back. This is not a run it back team. Well, you have to get better. So to do that, you have to run it better. You have to build. You have to improve. And we're going to do everything possible. Look at every option that we can to make that happen. Howard. Hi, Tommy. Um, I appreciate you said you're not going to give us any news or information on Scott uh, Brooks, but obviously that's a major question right now uh, moving forward with his contract expiring. Just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what factors will go into that decision on his future for you. How much, if any, input some of your most important players like Russ and Brad might have, and ultimately, whose decision will it be? Ultimately, all basketball decisions with the Wizards, that's what Ted hired me to do. And Ted has said that on record several times. But I'm a collaborator. I think we're going to sit with Ted, with, with people on our staff, with all of our players. And, and you know, we're going to formulate a lot of information a lot of opinions. I want to see what everybody thinks is on their mind and how ways to get better. And certainly and I'm going to sit with Scotty in ways that, we, that he thinks he can get his staff, things that they can do better. But I certainly have to do my job better. We all collectively share in the, the credit and the blame of anything that goes during an NBA season. There's never down to one person. But I, I lean heavily on Ted uh, for his wisdom and, and ways that we can get better Moving forward, you know, certainly the decision with the coaching staff, with all the players. Yes, at the end of the day, it is my responsibility, but I, I, I search out and, and seek the opinions of others, take all that information, we'll formulate a plan, and we'll execute it at the right time. And in terms of maybe outlining a little bit of what factors into the decision for you and in, in, in who the coach is going to be, this, I mean, you were around, of course, when. Scott was brought in, but now you're the ultimate decision maker. This is your first chance to either hire or extend a coach as the guy in charge. What, what for you is most important when making that decision on, on who should be your coach? Well, certainly their performance and, and the, the opportunity to take the Wizards to another level. And when you look at where, where Coach Brooks, as we finish the fifth season, you know, that first season you come in, you're 49 games, you get to the second round, you go within one game and get to the conference finals. To now, I, I think the, the only consistent thing was change. We, we were faced a lot of adversity. We had a lot of injuries. And quite honestly, when, when I look at this team that just finished the, the first round of the NBA playoffs, the last time we were in the playoffs, Bradley Beal is the only player on this roster uh, left from that team. And so that says a lot about the change that we've had. There hasn't been that continuity that I think successful franchises have year in and year out. And that's okay. We weren't successful enough to keep those old teams going. Now the question is moving forward. Do we have enough talent here? Do we have enough strength in the, in the, in the coaching staff to move forward? And, and that's what we're going to evaluate. I believe we do. I think Scotty's done a heck of a job, very trying circumstances. The two seasons that he didn't take us to the playoffs, we had huge injuries. We had huge issues there. This year, I think when you finish out the season going 17 and six, when I look at all the, I look around at all the things that we were able to do, some of the places we were able to win, some of the teams we were able to beat, uh, the accomplishments that happened within the season, that didn't happen by chance. It didn't happen by luck. There was a whole bunch of people pulling together and, and Scotty was absolutely an orchestrator of, of keeping everybody positive and moving through some very dark moments. So I give him great credit for that. We all collectively have to evaluate what's best for the Wizards moving forward, and that's what we'll do. Ours is not going to happen overnight. And certainly I think some of the, the things that we're going to look at certainly is 
How can we get better? How can we elevate our performance on the floor, away from the floor? How can we make more intelligent, informed decisions? Uh, and, and both ends of the court, defensively, we got to get better. There's no question. We showed that we could throughout the year. Offensively, hey, we've got to be more creative. Got to get the ball spread around a lot more. We've got to shoot the ball better. Those things we all we all agree upon. Now, how do you go out and do that? You, you identify the problems. Now we have to find the solution, and that's not going to happen overnight. Thank you. Absolutely. Matt Paris. Hey, Tommy. Um, just uh, sorry about that. Um, with the with the track that you guys are on, um, you know, there's this kind of belief that, you know, even if things go well, you're you're a four seed, you're a six seed, you're kind of on the same track that you were basically beforehand. Um, but how, why do you feel that that's different? Basically, like that the direction you guys are going in now is better than where you guys were previously. The last time you made the playoffs in 2018. Well. Frankly, I've been the GM for two years. Right? And like I mentioned, we've changed the entire roster around. So I can only speak to from that moment moving forward. Obviously, I was here for a long time, but none of those players are here. So many of the key people are all gone from that those time. So I look at it as from the moment that I was charged with taking this, this franchise forward, what have we been able to accomplish? What will be, we be able to accomplish moving forward? That's what I evaluate. And I look at a team last year that was missing, uh, you know, what we thought was a, you know, going to be the starting point guard, missed the entire season. We went through some dark, dark moments, ended up in a bubble in Orlando, uh, you know, with, with players that are no longer here. So then you fast forward and you, you look at this season and what we were able to acquire, the league's leading assist guy, top six rebounder, happened to be the same person. We were able to bring some free agents in. We were able to make some trades that made a difference. And in a short time, I think you know, we added more wins, which is your goal every year is to first and foremost your goal, get to the playoffs. But you want to, to your point, yeah, we certainly want to have home court next year. We want to have loftier expectations. But I can't speak to the past. You examine the past, you don't live there. I look forward to where we're going. I'm very excited about the pieces that we've added. And I'm very confident that we'll continue to add more pieces to get better. But, you know, I, I can't continue to, to look backwards. I don't think that pays anybody. I, I understand fans. And trust me, we all love the Wizards. Anybody that, that has a stake in this thing understands the pain at the end of the season, losing that last game and walking off the floor and how badly you want to get better. But it doesn't happen overnight. And I think the success of this season, to me, was the cohesiveness that I saw amongst the players, the peer-to-peer, -peer, genuine love, brotherhood that they had for each other. The, or, the elevation of uh, our franchise getting back to the playoffs after not being there for a couple of years. I think that was one significant step. Well, now with that, that becomes the expected next year. Now we have to build on that. DA. Hey, Tommy. Um, do you have uh, an understanding or assurances from Ted that in addition to Beal and Westbrook, you have the green light to add personnel that either get you to the tax or above the tax in years to come, if it means bringing in the type of improvement that you think is necessary to get to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Ted has been fantastic, but I, I never want to use the word I or me. When it comes to the big decisions, we're going to sit down as a group and hash it out. At the end of the day, it's my responsibility ultimately because that's the job that Ted gave me. But when I sit with him, we're going to collaborate with a lot of people. We're going to get a lot of opinions. We need to, to model out what it will look like in two years, five years financially. But Ted has never said no. And this ownership group is second to none in terms of their support, their enthusiasm for what we're trying to do. And I think they've been great to lean on and get information from. And Ted has been fantastic throughout the time I've dealt with him and has never said, hey, no, but he does make sure that we are very clear about the expectation when we do get the green light to do things. What is it that we expect to accomplish with that? Does it matter towards winning? 
And that's what I really love about him. The bottom line with him is always about, is this conducive to winning? Is this going to help us elevate our play? And are we going to continue to be pillars in the community? And one of the things, again, I go back to last night, one of the most gratifying things is when I, I heard our players comment about what a great bunch of people we had and what drama-free season we had off the floor. That's the kind of environment I believe we wanted to create. We said we would want to create. Now we need to nurture that and continue to make it better. And has, what has Brad said about how he wants to handle the next year? Does he not even want to talk about free agency or, or his contract or potential max, super max until the off season's over? Or does, how does he want to handle it? You know, again, DA, most of those conversations are going to be very private. You know, it's he and I have continued to have dialogue about the future and what the Wizards need to get better and what it takes to win a championship and how far we genuinely are from that, what pieces we need to move forward. And I continue to dialogue with him. And, and today, tomorrow, the rest of the week, the rest of the summer, we're going to continue to, to discuss those things. In terms of his future, I feel very confident that he and I will continue to be in this thing as a partnership as, as, as you should be. You know, with your top players, I think they have a stake in this and they, they need to have an opinion. But I think I've always shown uh, in two years, we, we've shown the ability here to navigate, to continue to add pieces uh, any way possible to get better. And in Bradley's case with his future, you know, that's certainly up to him. It's his decision. But I think we need to continue to show him that this is the place for him. He has always been on record. He has continuously stressed how badly he wants to retire a Washington wizard. And I never take one single day for granted with that. That's a huge responsibility for us to make sure that that continues to be his desire. Ava. Morning, Tommy. I wanted to ask you about a couple of your um, younger players. Uh, Scott said last night, he kind of almost viewed acquiring Daniel as akin to getting a lottery pick. I'm just wondering how you view um, Gaff in terms of, do you kind of see him on the same level as, as a Denny or as a Rui in terms of how you look at him and, and how you guys want to develop him this off season? Well, you put Daniel and Rui, Denny, Thomas Bryant, who we didn't get to see enough of. Uh, you know, those four guys right there are all very young in their NBA careers, but they show the potential to be part moving forward. And you know, we also acquired Chandler Hutchinson. We have some other pieces that we're trying to develop Unfortunately, we'd have the G League this year. A couple of guys that would normally be getting minutes in the G League didn't have that. We had the bubble for 15 games, but overall, there was some stunted growth, I feel, because of the lack of practice time. And, and a lot of our games were very tight games this year. So you're throwing guys, uh, normally you could be able to try to sneak them in the games. It just wasn't there. But in, in Daniel's case, you know, that's 23 games he played with us. Um, and there was a big enough excitement for us internally that, that he's going to be major piece for us moving forward for sure and we look forward to having Thomas Bryant back healthy that gives us two guys under contract that position that we know hey they, they we know what they can produce and we believe they can produce even more if moving forward but the other young guys that I put them all in the same pile that, that hey the way that we're going to get better quicker is through the development of the players that we do have we, we can't develop players we don't have yet we don't know what the draft is going to bring we don't know what free agency is going to bring we do know who we have under contract right now currently, and that's got to be our focus. And on that, um, just now that Rui has playoff experience under his feet, a, a full kind of one and a half seasons, I don't know how you guys are, are still talking about that, but what does growth look like for him this off season? Well, it starts, he's going to play for his country in the Olympics, and that's a great opportunity, a huge stage, a whole different ball of wax for him pressure-wise to have the world watching and, and to play against some of the best teams in the world. That's great experience for us. It's great experience to have him play in five playoff games, just like it was for Daniel, just like it was Alex Lynn. It was his first playoffs. Um, you know, when guys get a taste of that, now they have that. They, their, their first experience is now over. They can take that this summer and really focus on what they need to do to get better. And that's really what we discussed in the locker room is, hey, we'll know in the winter what you did in the summer. So we expect everybody to get better this summer. We're going to be supervising, certainly, but it's up to the players ultimately to decide when they come back next season, show your teammates that you care enough to go out and become a much better player than you left. And I think in Rui's case, you know, he's shown a lot. He's shown a lot of progress. 
And we got to be able to do it every single night in the NBA to truly get that respect of your peers. And that's something he's working towards. You know, he missed a good chunk of games this year. Um, he missed a good chunk of games last year. And he still hasn't seen an 82 game schedule yet. So he's got another surprise ahead for him next year. You know, if we get back to familiar, 82 game schedule is a lot different than the two years that he's been in the NBA. So that's going to be new. We expect for him to be healthy. We got to get all of our players in position to be healthy. Injuries happen, but let's try to get him to a, to a threshold much further next season than the one that he was at this year. You're on. Hi, Tommy. Uh, can you provide uh, an update on, on Denny, uh, you know, midway through his uh, uh, projected rehab? He's doing fine. You know, he's, he's, he's out of the boot now. He's able to, to do spot shooting. Uh, we're not having him jump. He's working out. His cardio, we're, we're really uh, trying to blow that out and make sure he stays, he keeps his lungs with him as he's uh, rehabbing. You know, lower body injuries are difficult because you can't do a lot of running. So you want to make sure you do everything you can to, to increase his cardio capacity while he's doing this. But he's doing fantastic. Uh, you know, six weeks into the injury, I, I couldn't tell you anything other than we're pleased with his progress. We we'll look forward to where he is at 12 weeks and see how healthy he is and what he's cleared to do. But certainly the goal is to have him training camp next year. He's going to be a very big piece of what we're doing. Thanks. Alex. Hey, Tommy, I know you said, you know, no decision uh, on Scott today in the future of the head coaching position, but is there a certain timetable where you are hoping to have that decision made by? I know the draft is the end of next month and the off season then builds up more to next year. So have you thought about a timetable for that at all? Well, quite frankly, when, when contracts, they, there's an end right, to people that are currently under contract. And certainly by the end of the month, I think it's obvious that that's when a contract runs out. So there needs to be clarity well before then. I don't have a date in mind. I want to have the best process in place, the best information to make a decision on. And that's not something I take lightly, and that's not something we're going to fast track whatsoever. You know, I think we got to go through everything. And that starts today uh, as we go through this and sit with players and sit with staff. And But certainly it doesn't end today if we don't make decisions. Uh, definitely don't ever react to anything. I don't think I've shown in two years that we panic. We ever make reactive moves. We we are pretty thoughtful about what we do, and, and we try to always look at the, the future. But to the people that have contracts that are ending, certainly they just deserve, they deserve clarity as quick as possible, and we'll get them that answer. Um, and then another quick question from um, from me. I know you talked about the culture change this year. Uh, how, how big of a role did Russell Westbrook come in and play in that? And, and just looking back on, you know, the trade, it was a big change with Wall going out and, and Westbrook coming in. Just looking back, at, how do you feel about that trade you guys made at the beginning of the year? Well, I think it speaks for itself. You know, the production that Russell was able to add on the floor, his presence in the locker room, you know, again, I, to rewind the tape and, and replay all the things that I've already said, I guess we could do that. Or I could tell you again, Russell has been tremendous. Um, and his, his presence continues to be very uplifting for everyone in this franchise. And certainly projecting forward, it's something to look forward to as we continue to improve this community here. Thank you. Neil. Hey, Tommy, good morning. You talked about you know, people's contracts, uh, you know, expiring. For you and yourself, have you been assured that you will be returning in your same role next year? And if that assurance has not been made yet, have you, do you feel like you've proven your worth in these past two years? You know, I, I, that's up to Ted. I'm, I'm under contract. I'm, my, it's never been an issue and I don't discuss myself, certainly with anybody, but uh, I, that's the least of my concerns. I mean, my evaluation of of my job is inconsequential compared to the, the owner of the team. That's who I answer to. But I believe that looking at what we've been able to do in this short amount of time, I think there's a lot to look forward to for, for this franchise. As a team, we have great people here. I'm very proud of our coaching staff. I'm very proud of our medical staff. I'm very grateful to our scouting staff, everybody that's involved here. Um, when we put together a presentation two years ago when, when we were able to get this job, to see that those things start to kind of fall in place and execute, um, it's very gratifying. But it also makes me so much hungrier for the future, what we have to do 
there is a sense of urgency. You know, when, when you got to play the number one seed and you look out there, if we were able to get a game, probably that game one was the one that we really let slip away. Then all of a sudden it's a series if you're 2-2, two, two, but you're not. You go into Philly last night, 3-1. You got to get that game, and we didn't get it. And that's a fact, and we got to do better, certainly. But when I when I evaluate where we've come in a short time, I'm, I'm excited about the future. Thanks, Tommy. Matt? Uh, hey, Tommy, I'm sort of paraphrasing here, but going into last offseason, you talked about the need for an athletic rim protector. Is there a particular archetype that, that you're prioritizing this offseason? I know you said athletic wing. Is, is that, that sort of high on, highest on the list? I think it is. I think that's an area, you know, and certainly getting some more, a little bit more of a veteran presence to balance out the roster. You know, when four of your top guys are young on the rookie contracts, on their second contract, in Thomas's case, and Thomas wasn't really with us this year. Um, you know, you got a lot of guys that were going through things for the first time. So I think you can balance that with a little bit more experience. And I can't say enough about, I left Ish's name out earlier. Ish had a hell of a year for us when, when he was able to play. He missed a lot of games. But when he was able to, to make impact on our, on our second unit, uh, I think he did a tremendous job. And you see those guys and their performances, and you, you definitely take – stock in that, that we need to balance our roster a little bit more. But we've got to get better defensively. Everything starts and ends there. We continue to try to harp on that. And that's something, one area of focus for sure. To do that, you certainly have to have a better scheme, but you have to have better players. And we try to get better players every year. But the players that we have, they get better. We develop them. You acquire other players, you bring in different things. But it's continuity, I'm going to go back to, is very important to me. I'm not looking to make wholesale changes. What we got to do is take what you have and make it better, add pieces in. I think we did that again. I keep coming back to what Robin was able to do, what Neto was able to do, what Russell was able to do. You know, those are three guys that made big impact that weren't with us a year ago. And I think Danny's on track to be an impact player in the future. We saw the growth of Rui this year. Those things all happened in, in the course of just from, from a year ago. And then I cannot say enough about the season Bradley Beal had. He is all NBA. You know, I know Doc said that to me last night. We were saying goodbye to each other and how much he looked forward. And, and Brad is going to be an all NBA player this year. Certainly earned that. One of the top scorers by far in the NBA. You know, lead, led the East in scoring. I uh, wish he could have got that scoring championship this year, but he sacrificed a lot for this team. And winning is the only thing that he cares about. And I, I think he had a season that's reflective of the direction this team is going. He's going to continue to elevate his game. He's in the prime of his career. And those things have happened here with the Washington Wizards. Those things have happened with the people that he plays with. And I think that's something Bradley's very proud of, and he should be. Thanks, Tom. Last question to Troy. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, first of all, congratulations uh, for you and the team and, and at least accomplishing some of the goals that you all set out before this season and making the playoffs. Um, my question to you is, um, when you talk about the, the, the young developing core, um, how do you balance um, having two timelines coexisting where you're developing this young core, but also trying to do right by Russ and Brad and trying to build a championship team around these two veteran players? Well, you do what's available. You know, everything that you have to do to run a franchise properly, if you look across the league, the elite teams do this. You, you have to have that balance of developing young players and, and letting the veterans go do what they do. And, and I think Bradley, Russell both commented how excited they are about the future of a player like Rui, player like Daniel uh, Gafford. When, when Thomas Bryant comes back, when we get Danny back healthy, they, they like playing with those young players. They were very excited about their growth and the trajectory for them. The key for us, again, is you know, to have key role players available, healthy all season long. I think everybody knows Davis, when he's healthy, he's a huge difference maker. This was a difficult season from the very start for him. I've never seen too many players. You miss training camp, you have injuries early, you're, you're kind of chasing your tail the rest of the year. And I uh, feel for him, and we're going to make sure we do everything possible to make sure that that doesn't happen again next year. Come in and have as healthy a camp as you can. You control your controllables, though. But I think when you look... Again, I can only point to we're not afraid to make changes to make this team better. We've, we've done that. We'll continue to do that. Anything it takes to get those guys 
to, to get that locker room uh, opportunity to go out and win and be sustainable, winning every year, year in and year out, to compete for a championship. That's what we've got to do. Those aren't just words. That those are things that I have to um, balance every single day. But I, I, I'd certainly look at our group and say, hey, can we contend for a championship? No, not today. We showed that. We were eliminated last night. But now we can take that experience, build on that experience. We keep adding players. Again, I, like I said, this time last year, a lot of these guys that were playing last night weren't here. So think about this roster in another year. You know, our expectations continue to go up. And we're going to keep adding talent. But I will continue to thrive on and really push forward to you. Those guys make a huge difference. Bradley, Russell, they're going to attract talent. They make players around them better. So in another year, I think we'll see continued growth. And I think those guys are both genuinely excited about what's ahead. Thank you, Tom. What else? That it? That's it. Hey, I want to say thank right. you. To, you, you I, I mean this sincerely. I have a great deal of empathy for, for everybody that had to cover this team this year. Most unusual circumstances. And, and, and watching every post-game press conference on Zoom and, and really losing that day-to-day -day contact. I know how difficult your jobs must have been this year. And I have a great deal of empathy for you. I'm very grateful for your coverage. And I look forward to catching up down the road. Now that it's over, and I don't know what it was like on the plane back or driving home or driving to the facility today, but how would you characterize this year for you? Um, I mean, there's a lot of words I can use, interesting. Uh, challenging, fun, exciting, um, a lot of, a lot of different things. Um, I think about this year, it's, um, but I think the main thing I, I always go back to is our players, their commitment to, to do things, um, that the league has never done before. I mean, our last two seasons, never, never, ever thought it would ever be like this, you know, with the suspension of play last March and then this season, the way things are. But I always go back to our players. Our players are the, are the driving force around every organization. Um, and with the coaching, you get the, the best enjoyment out of the players' development and their commitment to getting better. And that's what I look at when I think about this past season, the players' commitment to getting better uh, with unusual circumstances. And a word that, you know, Tommy has said this, I think you've said it too. You've talked about no drama. You talked about accountability. All of these things have kind of led to what this year entailed. We all know COVID injuries, all those things are a part of the narrative of this team. But why do you think you should come back? <laughs> uh, just, just get right to the point, huh? Um, well, one, it's not my decision. Uh, two, I, I love it here. I love the players. We started something a couple of years ago. And Tommy taking over, it's kind of changed a lot of things up. Uh, and then this, past, this past season, we took another step, you know, making the trade for uh, Russell and seeing their leadership, Brad and Russell's leadership develop. And to me, that was a big uh, step in the right direction. Um, I love the group of guys. I know we have a lot of work to do. And we're building something that we want to be able to be proud of. And, and I love to be a part of it. And I know, I, know what's, uh, I know what the challenges are ahead. I know what some of the, the strengths that we have. And, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the potential of the group, the work that I know they're going to put in this summer and coming back better and, uh, and healthy. But it's, like I said, it's not my decision. Scotty, thanks. Thanks for your professionalism all year long. All right, Chris, thank you. Thanks for supporting all of us. Chase. Hey, Scott, good morning. Um, we just morning. Tommy, of course, and he said that no decision has been made about your future, that yeah, he's going to have to evaluate some things. Just um, what about the, the uncertainty there and, and kind of not knowing yet? It uh, doesn't bother me one bit. That's just part of being in this business. Uh, it's, 
it's obviously well documented that my contract's up. Uh, never, never, never focused on that. Um, last summer, never focused on it. The start of this season, I've never focused on it. The entire season, I haven't haven't thought about it much other than last night getting questions and this morning. It's not that's not how I live my life, Chase. I I focus on doing my job the best I can. I got a lot of I got a uh, privilege being in this league for the long time that I've had. I've been in this league, and I got a lot of important things that I care about and being a husband and a dad are things I, I worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, me having a job is not uh, a, a thing that I worry about. It's a thing that I focus on, I love to do, but um, uncertainty, that's never, it never bothers me. I made it in the NBA as a non-drafted rookie. Uh, I think there were seven rounds back then and only 23 teams. So that was more of a long shot now, but that's nothing that I'm concerned with. And last night, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you heard, but Russell Westbrook gave you a, a really strong endorsement saying that he doesn't think you should go anywhere, that it should not even be a conversation. Um, just what does it mean to you to hear that from him? Well, I mean, it's not something that I – think much about, but it's something I, I, those are the players, players is what I care about. This is what I love to do. I know we all have some work to do, uh, but I appreciate Russell's, uh, what he's brought to our organization. He's come in here and, and really made us better. Uh, he's challenged me. He's challenged our staff. He's challenged Brad. He's challenged his teammates to be better. And he brings that intensity, brings that professionalism that, that we need. Um, Brad, Brad has been uh, very steady for us for a long time. My five years, he's, there's only been a few players that I've coached that has improved every year for five straight years. And, and I've coached two of them now, Russell and then now Brad. And but for him to say that he knows, he knows, um, he sees the potential in the group. And like I said, I have a lot of respect for how he plays and how he treats his teammates, how he treats the staff, how he treats everybody. He's a, he's a, he's the gold standard for how do you, how, how do you act as a professional on, on the court and off the court? You know, I get to see it firsthand, how he treats the flight attendants, how he treats the, our chef, how he treats everybody in our building. And that's, that's to me, that's a sign of a, a true champion. DA. Hey, Scott, um, from your perspective, um, what's the top thing that, Rui needs to improve on going into next season. And the same with Danny. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, thanks, DA, for not asking me another question about my status. And asked. <laughs> <laughs> Have a uh, question asked and answered. What are you supposed to? <laughs> yeah, right, uh, guys. I like. I want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Rui. I look at Rui's this season and I saw a lot of improvement. Unfortunately, he had some, he was hampered by some injuries and some he's had some tough luck in, in that in that in that regard. But even coming back from injuries, he's had some improvement. And a lot of times that doesn't that's not the case. You usually have to ramp it up, back up and you know you take a couple of steps back and it's gonna take you a while to get back to where you were. But but that never seemed to be the case with Rui. And another thing that I'm, I'm impressed with, he's had a couple of bad games and then he would bounce back and you know come back and play better. And then as just from like a playing style, he's not a lot of players go into their first playoff series and 
have better numbers in their regular season. I think we had two of them, Gaff and and um, and Rui, first time in the playoffs, and they, actually I think they played better. Uh, but he has to improve. There's no question. He's a young, developing player. That he's going to continue to get better offensively. Um, the his jump shot is going to keep improving. I think he made a step in the right direction. Uh, his ball handling skill is improving. Still needs to get much better there. His defensive versatility is an area that I, I see a potential a big growth next season. But he needs to keep playing. He hasn't played a lot of basketball in his NBA career. He's, only, I mean, he's been hurt last year and hurt this year. Uh, but I think those injuries are hopefully are all behind him. But I, I, I see a potential of really being a solid fixture in, you know, in our organization. And then Denny, um, I, I, like, I like his potential. He played a good amount of minutes this year. And there was uh, some really good moments. And there were some moments that you can tell that he was 19. Um, but we still have a lot of hope in you know, his uh, future. It's unfortunate that he got hurt. He's going to miss, you know, whatever, 10 to 12 weeks and miss the chance of being in the playoffs because it's a big body, pretty good athlete, plays with some toughness, good rebounder. Uh, the shooting is developing as, itself. So I think uh, the summer is going to be big for Rui and, and Denny. And I think that, that they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to shy away from, shy away from the work because that's what they do. They work hard and they're, they're good kids. And they're good. They want to come back better. Having leaders like Brad and, and Russell, um, will help their development because they know, they know what it takes. They get to see it every day. Brad doesn't, Brad doesn't take days off. He might not go long um, on some of the days that I don't want him to, but he's always on the court getting 15, 20 minutes of uh, development work. So for, for, for our young players, those two guys, and even Gaff in particular, to see those two guys prepare, that's gonna be, that's gonna pay dividends for those guys for many years. Also, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of your backcourt, how do you get more ball movement into the offense going forward so that it's not ISO stagnant, you know, one dribble pull-ups and things like that, or trying to dribble through double teams and things like that? Yeah, I mean, we need, we definitely need shooting. I mean, that's, we've known that. We thought we were, uh, we're going to be better shooting the ball this year than we did. I think when you have shooting, it, it kind of opens things up. I think we were third in the league in scoring. So, I mean, the scoring is really not the issue. I mean, there's, there's things that we can improve on. Um, but I think shooting can open up some more ball movement. The league, I don't know if we're, the league is, is a league of really talented offensive players. Every team switches, so you have to have a, you have to have attack players that can attack off the dribble, and if you have those players, which we do, then you have to have shooting that can help um, those guys make you know passes or the lane is not clogged. Like I, I mean, you take last night's game, we saw a lot of defenders in the paint, uh, but hopefully you know we have some rooms or some areas that we can improve in. And that's definitely one of them. Brad. Hey, Scott. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, we asked the same question to Tommy, but I'm just wondering what you deem from a basketball perspective, uh, your guys' uh, biggest need to address going into next season. What we need to address going into next season. Why well, I, I know we have, we always want to get better. I mean, it's myself, staff, performance team, medical, everybody, players, we're all in the same boat. If you're not looking to improve, you're, you're not going to be um, with our team. And we definitely need, we need, we have room to improve in a lot of areas. We can get, we can get better on the wing defensively. I think our bigs, you know, have a chance to, depending on who comes back, they have a chance to really continue to develop. And with Thomas Bryant, you know, getting healthy uh, and having another big summer of improvement with him, uh, our shooting, 
our ball handling, I think, can get better in, in a lot of different spots. But we have, I mean, we're never going to go into any season, no matter, I mean, any team. I don't think, like I said last night, really one team is happy at the end of the season. Uh, but where their roster is, that's the team that wins it. So you're always looking to improve, but we have some room to improve and we have some areas that we definitely need to improve on. And uh, Brad is obviously going into a contract year now. How, how much is that something that you discuss with him? And what do you feel like you're, you know, Tommy has talked about how the team still wants to continue to build around him. Uh, how much do you feel like your role is involves talking to him about that subject matter and, and giving him reasons to want to continue to stay as he said that he wants to? Yeah. I mean, I, I never not one time have talked to a player about their contracts. Um, I'm, I'm always for players um, doing what's best. There's a lot of players, uh, past players that gave all the current players opportunities to, to really reap the benefits of all the hard work and the former players that put in. So the free agency, the contracts, the money being made, it's all, we're all benefits from all the, the greatness that this league has been about. Um, with Brad, I have a, a really, really uh, good relationship with him. I'm very honest, direct, transparent. I mean, we had some very, very good talks throughout the years. I know when I got here five years ago, I knew he was better than just a catch and shoot player. And I said last night, he's made the all-star team three times. He's, he's going to be an all NBA player this year. Uh, he should have made the all-star team five years in a row. The, the two times that he didn't make it kind of surprised, definitely surprised me. Um, but I think um, he made a commitment a few years ago that was important. By him signing back, people are well aware that he likes being here and, and players can, can players see that and they, they think of, you know, maybe we can, he can, they can be a part of the development of the group. But I'm impressed with Brad's um, just, he's a, he's like real, he's like a steady force. You guys see it. He's never, never too up, never too down, but he's just focused on, on being the best version of himself every day for the, for his teammates and to the, to the team, to the city. And when you have a guy like that leading the group along with Russell and they have just a, their partnership is really cool to see, but, it's obviously Brad, keep building them around Brad and, and Russell is going to be a huge for our for the future of our franchise. Ava? Long time no see, Scott. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, a full 12 hours, I think. Um, I am just wondering off the bat, just kind of what the next week, uh, maybe 10 days looks for you guys are, I understand that not everybody's coming in for exit interviews, but what's kind of on your to-do list? Well, I'm gonna. Well, first, I think everybody, you guys included, we all need to reconnect to the people that that mean the most to us, and and the players are, they need to go somewhere and relax. It's been a a very physical um, year, and and mentally taxing year as well. The combination of those two things, you don't realize it until you get away that, man, that's, it's pretty, that was, that was hard to go through. All the games, you know, even when we had COVID, we had to make up those six games and they weren't giving us, you know, 12 extra days to make those six games up. They were going to squeeze it in and then the two playing games and that. So it just the players need to go and relax and reconnect and, and, and myself, I need to do the same thing, but I'm going to connect with the players uh, in the next uh, few days, you know, in, in, in brief, uh, not, a, not a long time, but then I will reconnect with them uh, in, in more depth, either go visit them in their cities or, or FaceTime or Zoom or just call throughout the, the next couple of weeks, but um, that's about it. I mean, def definitely the big word is going to be just to reconnect with the, er everything that we've been 
uh, without for a, for a long time. I'm now just imagining you like FaceTiming Brad somewhere while he's on vacation. Um, <laughs> Tommy uh, said when we talked to him that the, the play, making the playoffs now is kind of the base expectation moving forward. Um, I'm just wondering, since you've been around so many organizations like that, where that is always the expectation, what you feel like the difference is in a franchise that's maybe where you guys were the past couple of years, where you're on the cusp, you have some talent, you're, you're able to kind of get there get to the first round and an organization that's consistently there kind of getting better every year and, and, and progressing further and further. Is that stuff like access to resources? Does it start in the locker room with culture things like that? Well, there's no, there's no question. I'm excited about what we've accomplished this year because we made it, we've had some you know, tough, tough injuries. Um, after my first year here, we've had basically uh, with John, he was hurt um, for the three years after that, missed a lot of games. So it's not like you can replace that salary with other players. So you have to just deal with what you have. And we made the playoffs now three times, uh, but we made a we made a pivot in our thinking um, about this, this last season, and to really develop our younger guys and, and see what, and clean out certain things that we need to clean out of our, with, with our team. And, and Brad, I think was always going to be the, the focal point to build around. And we knew last season, I mean, we knew we would, it would be a, a very tough challenge to make the playoffs, but we, we put ourselves in a position to go down into the bubble, uh, which was also, a benefit. I don't think we were able to reap the benefits of that experience with all the things that we had to go through early in the season with with COVID and some of the injuries that we've had to some of those, those players that played for us down there. But going into this season, that was the goal. That was the goal. Even when we were 15 games under 500, I still kept saying it wasn't, I mean, I was trying to be as positive as I can, but I still had the goal of making the playoffs because I knew the potential of the group. I mean, we finished the season 17 and six. I'm not saying we can do that throughout the season at that pace, but you look at the last, you know, 40, 45 games, I think that's a true, uh, fair assessment on how we can play offensively and defensively. I think we were top 10 defensively the last three and a half months. Um, but making the playoffs was huge. I mean, it's, I, like I said last night, you have a you have a chance to for your young guys to experience playoff in, in that environment. Philadelphia is not an easy place to to play, and they had they had three games there. We had a couple of games at our place. We won one, which was the great environment in itself. But it's important. It's important. I've been. I remember in in my first year in OKC, we surprised everybody and made the playoffs. And we took the Lakers to six games and we lost game six at home. Um, the last second shot by Gasol. Uh, but it's, that was a, a big moment for us because now we got that out of the way. And this is the same thing with our guys. We got that first playoff experience out of the way. Unfortunately, Thomas Bryant and Denny didn't get an opportunity to experience their first time being in the playoffs, but for the group, they did, and they know how we prepare. They know the level of intensity. They know Russell's and Brad's mindset. It's another level going into the playoffs. Matt Paris. Hey, Scott. Um, you know, normally when a coach is in a, the last year of his contract, there's this talk of whether he'd be a I, – I know, I know. It's – it's not about you. It's about the group as a whole. <laughs> did you ask me a question last night about it? I did. And, and I know you want to stay here, but I'm just curious from a locker room perspective of just the way that the guys kind of ignored that and, and kind of rallied around focusing on the season at hand. Um, that, like I said, guys, I it never, it never, I'm not just saying this because it's just coach and, Coach talk, it never bothered me once, one bit that I was in my last year of my contract. No. I said it in the media day 
that it wasn't a focus. We got bigger things to worry about. Uh, and I'm, that I'm, I'm going to be all right. Um, like I said, I've been lucky enough to be in this league for 30 years. I've seen, a, I've seen it all. I don't believe, I don't believe in the theory of this is your last year in your contract. You can't coach the team because they're not going to listen to you. If you got good guys that you got guys that are, have high character, you got guys that want to get better, that have that desire to improve and determination, that grit. What are they not going to do? They're not going to play hard. No, those guys are they're wired. They're not wired that way. So, Tommy, we made a change. Our locker room is is there's no drama. It's all about getting better. It's all about being uh, true to yourself and for each other. And so that, that never was never was an issue. Sure. Uh, and let's be let's be real. You can have three or four years on your contracts. Does that really mean anything? Players get cut and bought out. Coaches get fired and paid off. Uh, so that's never, it's never was a concern. And like I said, I was raised a little, I was raised better to be worried about myself. And just a roster question. Um, how do you think Thomas Bryant and Daniel Gafford will play off each other? Or just, you know, kind of that center rotation going forward. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something that, I've thought about um, as after we picked up Gaff, but it's something that's going to work itself out. Both, I mean, Thomas, Thomas has to get healthy. That's first and foremost, as a lot of, uh, a lot of our guys, I mean, we got some guys that are banged up. We forget that Brad is still banged up. I mean, I forgot last night. That's why I mean, he played a lot of minutes, but Brad is banged up. Russell, I'll give him a lot of credit and he, he doesn't want to tell you guys that, but he, he was, he was laboring. His, his ankle is pretty swollen and regular season game, probably not going to play. Uh, but he knew the importance of, of what we were, what we were facing, but those two guys, Thomas has to get healthy and then improve and get better. And, and Gaff, you know, he's, he's a young developing athletic, high flyer, fast, uh, shot blocker. I, I have a lot of, a lot of love for his game and I, just to who he is. I saw, him, you know, we didn't practice. That's another thing. We didn't really practice much because of, of the schedule, but I saw his, his growth without practicing. Now you throw some practices um, and some work in the summer with them. So I think those guys can play well together. Just real quick on Gafford, sorry for asking a third. Um, well, he, do you want him to, to lose weight? He mentioned about gaining weight. He talked about his conditioning. It, I mean, can he gain weight and still be conditioned the way that you need him to play extended stretches? No, when I, when I say condition, I mean, this guy is a world-class athlete. He's in great shape. and is, He's going to get strong. He's 22. He's still, he doesn't even have his man strength yet. That's going to happen through osmosis, but it's also going to it's also going to happen through the work that he puts in. I mean, he's going to, you know, he's going to be 27 in five years. Um, so that's where you know that's where you start your peak. Um, but the conditioning, when I say conditioning, we play at a high speed. We got we got one of the fastest guards in the league. We want to play with pace. So when you know you can play five or six minutes, and then it gets to you, you get winded, no matter how good of a shape you are, you're big, 6'11", 260, or whatever, how many pounds he is, that's a lot of weight to run at his speed and to run, to change the directions, how many times we do in a quarter. Uh, so that stamina and being used to it, and then think about it, he, hasn't, he didn't play much this past season, didn't play much last season. And then we were using him every night consistently for, 16 to 20 minutes, depending on the situation, depending on foul trouble. That's why I kind of love the, I grew, I grew to love our three center rotation because I think it helped Gaff play even at a harder, at, I mean, at a, at a higher pace for a longer period of time and not have to worry about foul trouble. Cause that's, that's, that's been a little bit of an issue uh, with him in his first two years. Not, not just with him, a lot of big guys that are, young in this league 
go through them because there's so many pick and roll plays and those so many dynamic guards are coming right at you and the experience of being able to handle that it takes time but his his future very is very bright and that was one of the the very key important moments of our team we we traded them uh we traded away players that we we weren't using much good guys they just didn't fit with what we were doing and and we got back a really really talented high level young uh center that has a bright future i just got alex Hey, Scott, uh, you know, you, you've played for a lot of teams in this league. You've coached other teams in this league, um, got a lot of seasons. When, when it's, you know, you look back on this a long time from now, this was a crazy year, even, even looking back on it now. What, where is this season going to, you know, stand looking back at it? And, and how much did this year mean to you to go through all the adversity and, and to, to have this group with you this year? And just as how much are you going to kind of cherish the season, even though maybe it didn't end as, as good as you would have liked, but, but what are you going to look back on about it? Yeah. I mean, the thing about it, sometimes we all get, I mean, I've been enough, enough teams as a player, as an assistant coach, as a head coach. And I know there's, there's always disappointment when you don't finish um, where you want to finish. I mean, it's like I said, but there's only going to be one happy team. Uh, been through the finals and had a great year and trust me that was a rough summer uh, but this season it's going to rank up there with one of the, my favorite seasons because of what we had to go through like I've said many times it's a lot of things are public but there's a lot of things that we went through that that nobody knows and there's some things that players went through or coaches went through that I don't even know. COVID's hit many, many walks of life and, and many of us in, in different ways. And we've all had people that passed away from it, uh, that devastated their, their families over it. And for us to continue to, to play and fight for one another and, and have the injuries that we've had. And to me, that's, that's it's going to go down as a, one of my favorite seasons to coach because of that. You want players that play with resiliency. You want players to play with grit and, and toughness and fight and don't fall. Um, don't fall for the, 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 the toughness. That, I mean, you have to play with that toughness that when you do have some adversity, you're not going to just give in. And I think that we did that this year, that adversity that hit us many times, but we never gave in. So that, that's what I'm always going to remember this season because of that. Thanks for all your time this season, Scott. Appreciate it, Alex. Chris Miller. Scotty, I know you don't want to talk about your future, but <laughs> can you actually talk about your staff and what, all of them have kind of gone through with you in this fight this season. And cause you know, we don't talk at all about assistant coaches and trainers and you know, the secondary staff like that. What would you say about the year you had with that group? Um, proud of them. I met with them this morning. I'm very honest and direct with them. I'm proud of them. They, the players and the coaches and the medical and the performance, they, they're the engine. I'm just part of the ride. I, I love being part of the group, but I'm proud of their commitment to, to our players. And when you have a good staff like I have about developing and, and getting getting players better, and and we had to do things like every all the other 29 teams, figure it out without practicing. And that's pretty hard to do because this is all we know. None of us, myself, none of us know how to get players better without being on the practice court. And we had to figure out how to do that. And that was a challenge, but we were able to do that. All, all of our guys um, got a little bit better. And from Brad all the way down, um, I'm proud of our, I'm proud of our staff. Like I said, we did things different this year and being away from family members and the traveling and the testing early morning, late night, 
not leaving the hotel room on the road, not having meetings on the road, everything doing Zoom, knowing that all, all of my assistant coaches are down the hall from me, but we didn't couldn't be together. And no team dinners and no nothing. It was just you had you were you were able to go initially one hour a day for a walk. And then they bumped it up to two times a day for two hours. But I'm proud of the group. I'm proud of the coaches, staff, I'm the medical, the performance team, the sports scientists, our chef, everybody down the line. Uh, they're all part of our success. They're all part of growing our team going into the future. Christos. Hello, coach. Hope you are doing well. What was the, mo the most challenging part of the, uh, that season for you personally? What was your favorite, your favorite part of that season? Yeah, just not having, not knowing my contract situation was pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, the toughest part, I mean, the toughest part knowing that, that our players um, were going through some difficult times is, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard knowing what everybody's going through and really can't do nothing about it. Uh, but the world was going through the same things. I mean, it's sometimes we look at athletes that, that they don't, they don't have, they don't go through the same up and down, you know, the, the things that we all, I mean, the rest of the world goes through, but they do. And that was tough. And then not being able to practice, that was tough. I mean, I, I love the gym. That's how I made it as a player. That's how I made it as a coach and not be able to, not knowing how we will get better without being on the court, that was tough. But the saving grace of all that, all the other 29 teams were in the same boat. But, you know, we've had some young players that needed practice time, but we figured it out. I'll tell you, my staff did a good job of figuring it out. Uh, whether it was one on one, one on zero workouts, they got it done. So that was the, that was definitely tough, but the, the satisfying and the most uh, rewarding is the being with the players that, being with the group that I was with, couldn't ask for a better group of guys that committed guys that, that played hard for one another. When you're the, when you're the head coach, you're not going to please everyone. You're not going to please uh, all 15 players on your team uh, because everybody wants to play, but you just can't play everyone. And you always, uh, that's all, you're always in a tough position, but I've always been fair and honest with the players and direct with them and, and very honest policy with the players about playing time and but you're not going to please everyone but I try to do the best I can and also how many steps forward do you feel that you made as a team this season and how optimistic you are about the next season I'm, I'm excited about the future of this team like I said we got good leadership Brad and Brad and Russell their, their partnership is is really incredible that you would think that they played together for, for five years. Um, they already got a good feel on how, how um, each player operates on the court and off the court. Russell's very, you know, he's intense and he shows it. Like I said last night, very demonstrative. Um, Brad is reserved, but that burning desire is just as powerful as Russell's. And they kind of play off one another. And I think that leadership uh, and some of our young players' future and their development and their work that they're going to put back and they're going to get better in their first round pick and the, the potential to come back. Some players got to come back better and have better years. Um, and then free agency. We Ted has always given Tommy the opportunity to go out and make our team better and and we're going to do that we're not going to run it back i'll tell you that um, but that's that's a lot of teams are going to be in that same boat so we're we're fighting for the incremental gains as every other team are but we're going to do it through hard work and we're going to try to improve our roster within and then add some pieces along the way as well neil hey scott uh, Russ and Tommy have both, you know, credited you how much you kept the team together. And I know you don't like to talk about private conversations, but can you just kind of describe and, you know, maybe with this season being so much different, how did you learn to do that and accomplish that 
Um, and maybe if you can give us an example of, you know, something that you did that, you know, really struck with the team to keep it together when, you know, they could have easily had, had their heads down. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't look for credit. I don't deserve the credit. I'm a part of the group. And our players have done a good job of uh, fighting for one another. But Tommy's done a good job of bringing guys in that believe in that. You can, you can do everything known to man to motivate a player. But if he's not self-motivated, it's going to be short-lived. And you could bring in all the great coaches and give the greatest speeches of all, all time. That might work for a half, but it's not going to work long term unless you got self motivated players, and that's what we do. We got some self motivated guys that want to that want to play. Um, they want to play. They want to get better. They want to improve. They want to be on the court. They want to challenge each other. That's the thing that I missed that we didn't have that practice challenge that I know that that could have even got the group even better. Um, Russell and I have had great conversations. Brad and I have great conversations. And I, I needed their help throughout the year. I leaned on them quite a bit throughout the year of how to keep everybody motivated because I knew they were, they, they wanted it. I saw it long time for a long time with Russell. He wants that. He has that, he has that edge that he wants to prove it to himself and his teammates every night. And, but I've had great conversations with them. But my job is always to stay connected with the group and make sure the group is, is moving forward. And even, even when things were looking down, my job was not to make them feel worse. My job was to find ways to, to find little victories in some of, the, some of the tough moments that we were having, whether it was a player playing well, whether it was a good quarter or good half or make it a fourth quarter game. Um, I mean, I, that's my job. And like I said, I'm favorite part about this season was just staying together. And I know it's unfortunate our fans did not be able, was not able to see it until the later part of the season, but they, they would have been proud of their group, the way we fought it, the development and the evolution of our team through all the hard work that they put in, um, just the mental work. The mental, the mental toughness that they showed was really, really, to me, remarkable. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. That's it, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys, just last thing. Just want to just say thank you guys for all your support. You guys do a great job. I know sometimes I want to say some mean things to you, but I appreciate all the things that you guys do for our team and players and your time away from your family just as important as, as my time. So I thank you all you guys all for that and appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon.